everyone, it's Sally here from Strength for Dance, and today with our Top Tip Tuesday, I am joined by a friend of mine called Lee, who is also from the dance industry. Hey, Lee. Hey, Sal. Um, we're going to be talking about all things dance and strength training today. So why don't you give us a little bit of information about who you are, Lee? When did you start dancing and what's your background? Yeah, sure. Um, I started dancing when I was about three. Uh, my mum owned a dance studio in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne and I kind of started with jazz and tap and then kind of picked up ballet and contemporary and all from there. Um, and then when I finished high school, I went and did a Bachelor of Music Theatre and then I went and studied full-time dance with Robert Storick after that as well. Down in Melbourne, yeah? Yeah, in Melbourne, yeah. Okay, so your main area of expertise at the moment is the musical theatre genre? Yeah, so uh, I went and did my BA of Music Theatre and then wanted to further my dance training in that field to help me be more competitive in the industry. So whilst I got trained in all facets of dance, my kind of, the my, where I was aiming for was music theatre. Yes, okay. Now, over those years, have you ever come across any injuries within your body that have prevented you from doing things? <laughs> yes, Ella, I have. Um, I, my biggest in, well, I don't know if you technically call it an injury, uh, mm -hmm. issue issues I have uh my glute med and my psoas and my and all through my hip flexors all through my lower back are incredibly tight um which is partially I think genetics partially how I naturally move and walk partially for having been taught to tuck over tuck uh as a dancer for so long it fatigued all my hip flexors which was fine when I was in my teens and in my early 20s. By the time I got to my late 20s, my body kind of went, no, nah, no more. We're not having it. So I had yeah. a lot of issues. I was There was a period where I struggled to walk, let alone dance, because it got quite bad. Yeah, right. And yeah. how did you get yourself out of that? Or was there any sort of gems of wisdom um, that helped you along the way? It was a lot of trial and error. Uh, I've pretty much given most things a crack I've yeah. I've done myo physio osteo chiro um I did got a lot of remedial massage at the time when it happened I was a student so obviously money was not uh free flowing uh so I was doing at that time what I found most effective to begin with was I did a lot of massage to try and obviously relax the air a lot of dry needling dry needling is my savior uh, mm -hmm. I still swear by dry needling. Uh, my body doesn't react very well to massage. It really clings on. It takes about an hour of massage for my body to relax. So dry needling uh, uh, is, is much more useful for my body. It's much easier for whoever's treating me and for, for myself, it's less exhausting. Um, so I did a lot of dry needling and massage and then I started doing reformer Pilates to try and uh, retrain uh, how I sat with my pelvis and then try to infiltrate that into my dancing. And then from there, I got into a lot of mobility-based training. Yeah, right, okay. Mm. Now, obviously the, the Pilates, had you been, how old were you when you started doing that side of training? 27. 27. Yeah. Uh, did you have any, I know even with my own training, um, I have, now I train very differently and I sort of think, oh, if I'd been doing that when I was in my early 20s, things may have been a bit different. To, oh, have... look, totally. Uh, I, had, I had trained in weights prior to, prior to that point, uh, but I really probably probably more from more of an aesthetic background than a movement quality background. Um, and I probably never trained my back anywhere near enough because my back was prone to um, going on me, throwing it out or having a spasm in dance. So I was quite fearful of ever working my back that I would irritate it. Whereas nowadays I work my back quite a lot. And I found that that's been very beneficial, obviously, because I've been able to strengthen the muscles. It's still incredibly tight through that area. But generally nowadays, 
it doesn't really a touch wood it doesn't really mm. uh flare up too often it's mm. recently flared up like a little bit and I think that would be the first time in years um mm. and I still I get nowadays I know that I just have to, I have to get treatment every like three to four weeks like just to help release the area to encourage so I generally always get my glutes and around my hips and my lower back dry needle probably every three to four weeks and treated now I wanted to um chat to you very much though because I know mm. sort of like me you've had a long history of going to the gym but yeah. recently you've been looking into bodybuilding yeah so looking at changing the shape of your body and really focusing on the high yeah. of things yeah um i know within the dance world for women it can mm -hmm. be seen as a scary area yeah. um even if we do some body weight work we have fear of getting bulky yeah. and for the male side of things um i know male dancers in the past have to have a certain look and they want to build yeah. muscle but I wanted you to sort of talk us through what actually is involved if you are wanting to sculpt, change shape and have some hypertrophy training, which is making those muscles grow. Is it an yeah. easy process, Lee? Uh, look, I mean, everyone comes from a different base shape. Um, so yeah. some people are blessed and some people are less blessed. And we all have pros and cons to um, everybody every body shape uh, mm -hmm. my body if you're looking at the way they used to break down bodies my body kind of sits between an endo and a mesomorph um mm -hmm. so i'm a little bit more square i'm a bit more solid so in terms of for a male dancer uh particularly for music theater or like a more commercial side generally the look i guess at the moment is men like to be muscular and they like to be lean they like to be able to dance topless and you know not have mm -hmm things jiggle and move um so for my body type the putting on the muscle is not as difficult as say someone who's very ectomorphic and is like mm -hmm. more like a string bean body type but for me to be lean is very difficult uh, my body will put on muscle very easily but it holds fat much easier as well so yeah. for me having been trained as a dancer and always having been more on the solid end of the scale um, eating more food to help me build more muscle is obviously it's still a fear even yes all, all these years later because it's years of like even as a kid I would yo-yo um my um I used to get called little Buddha um I used to have like a tire around like a spare tire around my stomach and my parents said not to my face but um later they were like oh yeah you had a bit of a spare tire so I was always conscious of that my siblings never struggled with that I struggled with that the whole time so to eat more to build muscle is very scary for me. Mm. Mm. I think, I mean, and, and we'd mentioned this before when we've been chatting about this kind of thing, generally the people in the dancing realm would be under eating a lot of the time. Totally. And I would have... To what they're doing in their performing and training schedule. Definitely. Um, obviously everyone's different, but I would feel that obviously you, I have friends in the dance industry and they, they have abs all the time and some of them are genetically blessed and lucky them. Um, but I would imagine that a lot of girls particularly probably don't, if they're not got that body type as mm -hmm. natural, that kind of showgirl statuesque body, mm -hmm. I would imagine they're probably definitely eating on the lower end of the scale. Definitely. Which obviously if you're dancing eight shows a week is going to leave you prone to injuries. Yeah, absolutely. So mm. if you are if you are transforming your shape and wanting to build muscle, mm. what what is involved? So what did your training, your nutritional schedule look like? Mm. Um so I just so I'm I competed into th about two years ago now for the first mm -hmm. time. And so I guess for everybody's body it's obviously different and there's a lot of trial and error. Uh so my new coach and I are trying to learn off my last experience. So I've just done a bulk now and I'm sitting at about 87, 88 kilos. Um, but my stage weight last time I was on stage was 74 kilos. So obviously quite an astronomical difference. Um, so for me at the moment, bulking, I have been, I've been doing weights six times a week uh, with like a push-pull break. So 
push pull legs, push pull legs. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been eating about 3,600 calories at the peak of my bulk to try and help me put on weight, which obviously that's going to be some fat as well in that. Um, but that's how many calories I was kind of eating to, to kind of add on size. And I probably put on about five or six kilos. Obviously not all of that will have been muscle, but um, a portion of that, hopefully as we're, we're now putting me in a calorie deficit and I'm on about 2,400 calories. So not on a crazy deficit, but definitely lower. Um, we're trying to slowly like chip away at that. And hopefully having done all of that, we will have bulked me up a little bit for my next comp. Mm. And when, when you're referring, referring to bulking up, you mm -hmm. were talking about literally um, hypertrophy training, the muscles are yep. getting bigger. Yep, definitely. But yep. also correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. um, with this kind of thing, you, you need to feed the growth. Yes, but definitely. But also that will not be looking like the six-pack shred that people have in their mind and I want Def to look like an acrobat kind of thing. Definitely. Look, I'm sure there are people who do do a bulk and still have that and uh that's that's unfair but they do um I know obviously with social media and stuff it's really easy to see all those influencers who have that gym body all the time and they're doing a bulk and they just look a little bit more swollen in their bulk than normal yeah I personally don't look like that I, I wish I looked like that but I definitely don't um my dimensions of my body are almost they're almost like the opposite of what would be stereotypically appealing. Like my legs are very big and my upper body is smaller, like very square. Yeah. So for me, I've been to try and build that V taper to balance my legs. And of course, when I bulk, my legs get bigger with the rest of me. So yeah. it's um, trying to get my, because my glutes are quite big. So my glutes and my quads, trying to get them to grow, but not grow crazy, but to try and get my V taper in my back to balance that out uh so sorry i've gone on a tangent now um and yeah so obviously in by the end of my bulk when i hit 90 kilos which i looked better at that version of 90 kilos than i've looked in the past you could see all the muscle there but obviously there was fat on top of it i got to the point where i was like i can't bulk anymore i feel really uncomfortable now um and obviously having been from that dance training um, yeah. And we're all in we're all encouraged to look a certain way. Um, yeah. I'm saying to my coach, okay, I think we need to stop now. I'm getting really uncomfortable. I'm yes. like, I'm in the very edge of my clothes, like they're barely fitting. Um, mm -hmm. I need to stop. So yeah. Yeah. I know when um when I've taught at the full-time schools here at the Sydney side of things, and mm -hmm. um, I've had some of the male full-time students say, I want to get bigger. I've always said to them, you know, it's a strong regime. It's you're counting calories. You're eating many times a day on yeah. a very strict diet. And mm -hmm. it's a proper percentage mix of your fat, carbohydrates and protein. Yeah. Uh, you need to be training six days a week and sometimes yeah. a couple of times a day. Yeah. Yeah. And that just doesn't mix with full-time dance training and no. often doesn't mix with performing in a show mm. and also doesn't mix with cardio no like so, I mean, yeah obviously you can do it but it's going to be a very slow process to do that it's not like everyone i mean we're all human we want results quicker um so full-time dance for any male like i was probably i got really lean in full-time dance and my course was only four hours a day but that was dancing constantly four hours a day. A lot of courses do eight hours a day of dancing. <laughs> Your body's already so fatigued from that anyway. Um, really doing weight, like doing weights um, or Pilates or something for ma body maintenance would be more important at that time. If your body is more naturally ectomorphic, trying to put on size while you're doing that many hours of dance a day at generally... And I mean, most full-time dancers are about what between sixteen and twenty-two in age. Mm -hmm. The metabolism, yeah. their metabolism is going to be much quicker than say where mine is. It's going to be very, very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. uh, since I've basically finished, since I basically finished full-time dance, and I finished it when I was twenty-seven, 
I've pretty much been on and off macro calories, like you said, the whole time. So mm-hmm. protein, fats, carbs. And yeah. nowadays, even if I'm not dieting, obviously exclude, like obviously if I go out to dinner or if I have a social life or whatever, I don't. But my day-to-day living, I weigh all my food. I don't even think about it anymore. Um, mm-hmm. That's just, if I then want to be able to have a meal or drinks with my friends on the weekend, I have at least counted for all my calories during the week. So Mm -hmm. I think, look, some people probably think that's crazy, but I just don't even think about it anymore Mm. in that regard. Yeah. 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 And when you are doing your bulking phase or your Mm -hmm. building phase, do you do much of the cardio training kind of thing? Because I know we're quite uh, quite hell-bent on cardio as a dance population. (laughs) I know. Um, I actually don't hate, like, I enjoy, like, all those, like, I enjoy cardio weight mixes, like the F45s or even, like, some CrossFit style or group fitness classes. I really enjoy those classes. But in terms of what I'm trying to achieve in creating shapes and obviously with previous injuries when I'm just going in and doing weight exercises, I very rarely pull anything when I'm just concentrating on exercises because I'm concentrating on all my technique. Obviously in those small group classes, when you're kind of throwing yourself around, there is a bit more likelihood you might, Mm -hmm. you know, not think because you're fatigued. Um, But no, at this stage, I won't do any cardio. I will probably, as I'm cutting down, I will probably introduce cardio, hopefully not too um, early, (laughs) Um, (laughs) because I will probably be doing that on top of my weights. But to get to my stage, weight or my my stage form last time I had to do weights and cardio uh and with my previous coach I was doing weights five times a week and about half an hour cardio on top of that those five times a week as well um so Mm -hmm. I would probably do something similar this time I'm not quite sure what it will be yet but it will be essentially weights and cardio to help to help my body basically cut down which some other people's body, like other, some of my other, my coaches, other clients, mm. they don't need to do any cardio. Yeah, like, right. Um, they don't need to <laughs> yeah. do any day. Uh, One of my friends competed on the weekend and he did really well. His calories were, he was cutting on 3,800 calories and I was bulking on 3,400 calories. Now we have different coaches, but he was the most conditioned guy up on the stage, I would say. Um, and for him, his body doesn't want to put on muscle and size, but it wants to be shredded. Whereas my body's the opposite. It will prevent, yeah. it's not going to want to be shredded. So yeah. it's just everyone's so different. I think, I think that's such an important point as well to stress there, Lee, which you've said a couple of times now, is that basis of genetics and what you have and learning to work with that. So maybe as well being realistic about what your goal is. To- totally. Um, I think the first time, the first time I did a bodybuilding comp, I think I just be from the dance background. It's totally <laughs> been fed out of a dance background. Um, I just wanted abs for like <laughs> once in my life. I want to say I've done that. I've had abs, um, and which I did, but in my last comp, I don't think I had carbs in about the five weeks beforehand. Um, I was only on egg whites, white fish, and veggies. So I was severely severely well probably malnourished um i know not many calories it's it basically sounded like structured anorexia by the end really um so whilst i had the abs i also a bit looked a bit in the face like i had a meth addiction um so i was very very drawn out um so hopefully we're avoiding that this time but for my body what i took from that comp was for my body type at least in that way it's not maintainable for me to be that lean. It would be like, it would, yes. it, would kill, it would kill me. It would be so unhealthy for me to stay that lean. And I was at about 6%. So I wasn't even the leanest on stage. Some people get to three or four, but obviously their genetics allowed yes. to be that. So for me, and I guess what my coach and I are kind of trying to work on, and this is a, like a long-term goal. And obviously everyone has shorter and long-term goals. For me, because I do fitness and physique, which is at the bottom of kind of the natural bodybuilding realm. Uh, Generally for a male, it goes fitness, physique, classic, then bodybuilding. Uh, 
I'm and is pick- that that's just a size category, is it, Lee? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a size category, but it's also kind of like your dimensions. So mm-hmm. fitness, like this is how they describe it. It's not accurate to the amount of training you do, but fitness mm-hmm. is kind of like, oh, I go to the gym a couple of times a week. Um, yeah. like Even though body. you're living in the gym seven days a yeah, week. Exactly. Yeah. Physique is like, oh, I go to the gym like five or six days a week. And then you get to classic and bodybuilding. It's like I've been gymming five or six times a week for several years. Mm. Um, generally, the dimensions change. Uh, for fitness and physique, like the upper body is developed, the legs aren't super developed. And then you get to classic, which is like Arnold. Like Arnold. Mm. But obviously you're doing, I do natural. So it's a much smaller version of that. But it's a very big V type. It's very kind of Greek God looking. And then you get to bodybuilding and it's just a bit more fleshed out through the legs and the shapes kind of get a bit bigger again. Um, So my long-term goal is to try and get to classic um, because I've already got the legs for it, which is, I guess, the silver lining to my jeans because legs are very hard to big. My my coach has basically said he probably will never be able to get to classic because he doesn't know if his legs will build to that size that's required. Um, so for us, we're trying to change the dimensions by building the top half to make the lower half look smaller. And then obviously I'll still cut down for comps, but it just means in everyday life, my dimensions, like when I'm in a singlet or when I'm in a t-shirt, mm. they're just a bit more, I guess, what I would like them to be. But yeah. I probably, like I'll have abs probably the two weeks before the comp, two weeks after the comp, I'll take some photos. I go, oh, that was nice. Um, they but- exist. <laughs> they are there under all that but for me and like at the moment I'm at about 17% body fat on his calipers uh obviously everyone has different ways of measuring body fat so mm-hmm. it's possible to compare but uh I would love to live at around 10 to 12 percent so which I think is still obviously within a fit, quite a healthy range obviously 10 to 12 percent on me will look completely different on someone else and someone yes. else will probably have abs at 10 to 12 percent I won't because yeah. my body just won't do that but I'll be I'll be leaner up the top and everything but I still probably won't have a six-pack by any means now the strength training you do now is, would I be right in saying that's quite different from what you used to be doing? Um, or is it just a volume thing that's different? I think it's more refined. I don't do my gym program. I get my coach to do it for me. Um, I'm very much, I think also because of my injuries, I get very stressed that, because I think in my early 20s, I just wanted to lift to put on some muscle like most guys at that age. Um, but everything is very kind of like bro lifting. Like, like I wanted a bigger chest. So I just changed chest, which meant my posture was very slumped forward. I wasn't training back because I had a naturally bad back. I was afraid to do it. So because of that and my injuries, I'm very conscient, conscious of like training everything. I need to make sure that I'm hitting all the spots. So I have him do a program for me and he makes sure that all the spots, you know, get hit the way they're meant to be hit. So I probably spend at the moment, it's definitely a bigger program at the moment because obviously I'm doing my comp at the end of September. Um, But I probably spend an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half in the gym, which generally in normal life outside of a comp, I would probably only want to spend an hour to an hour 15. Um, But at the moment I'm spending a bit longer. But it's all just, it's all weights and cables and barbells and dumbbells so it's all this the same things but I have a coach guiding me not a PT he's not my PT yeah. um he just literally gives me the program I mean if I have any questions about the way I'm moving um also like my hinge mm. isn't very mm-hmm. good so there's some exercises that I just don't have the movement range for in my lower back so sometimes we have to adapt that or do a different exercise that's still encouraging strengthening that but you know things that aren't going to blow it out either mm. when you were doing your i love the term bro my bro training you're doing backs and chest yeah. what do you bench man what do you bench um yeah. why is it you think you didn't get the body you wanted at the time compared to what you have now so what was the main difference between then and now i just didn't know <laughs> i probably just didn't know what i was doing um I 
I, I mean, look, part of it's, I guess, a financial commitment. I have, I've obviously done, like, I've done all those, like, F45 style makeover things. So I probably learned a lot more about nutrition as I've gotten older. Um, early on, I definitely didn't know anything about nutrition. Um, I just tried to eat healthy. But what we got taught was healthy in the 90s is very different to what is healthy now. And obviously, that was all my childhood. Um, like I don't really drink milk or anything anymore and mm-hmm. I never liked milk as a child, but you know, we obviously got taught, you know, drink milk, drink milk. And nowadays people are like, oh, I mean, you can, like, it's not the big, so things change all the time. So my, my concept of what was healthy in my early twenties was completely different to what is now. And I mean, I sort of, I, I drank protein powder because, you know, mm-hmm. that's what everyone does. Um, but I probably... See, it's interesting, even now, like, my current coach has me on a lot more carbs than I've probably ever been on in my, like, later life. Um, Because when I did all those makeovers, it was very, like, low carbs, low carbs, slowly introduced the carbs back in. And then when I did macros, I had carbs, but I had carbs that were, like, better carbs. Like, I had your quinoa, your brown rice, whereas at the moment, I've got pasta, I've got muffins, I've, I had bagels, like, I had, I've had a whole lot of things that are just factored into my macro calories I hadn't had pasta in about six or seven years like during the week like so so I yeah exactly so I'm having food that I enjoy that I missed out on for a long time so I guess for my early 20s going back to your question definitely um definitely nutrition and secondly I probably just didn't have an understanding of what I wanted uh like I knew that I wanted a clear, clear goal kind of thing. Yeah, I knew I wanted bigger pecs. I knew I wanted bigger shoulders, but like I didn't really think about like I mean you will have seen them like guys who train their chest but don't train their back and then they look really mm. warped. Or or yeah, exactly. Mm. Um and like now as I get older, because I don't they have a really strong V taper, when I see guys in the gym with a really strong V taper, I'm like, oh that looks really good, it looks really strong. And generally they look like you look very stable in like the way you are built and structured. Um, I definitely didn't train legs. Um, I still probably train legs on the lower side. Um, Mm -hmm. If I I have to skip a day, I'll skip my leg day. But my, but that's just, that's where my genetics, I guess, are lucky. My Mm -hmm. my quads are huge. Uh, My calves could be bigger, but Mm-hmm. like it's everyone's different like I literally have people going what did you do for your glutes and stuff and I'm like I don't really do much um and <laughs> like I don't even have squats on like I don't have squats or deadlifts in my program at the moment which is probably the first time in years um which has kind of been nice to have a little break to be honest um I really like deadlifts I hate squats um yeah. I have I have leg press and like isolations but um, and I've got rack pulls and kind of place of deadlift and I've not really done rack pulls before. So that was, well, that was fun to have a new challenge, but for that, I don't really do as much as say probably some other people need to. And that's just, I guess, where my genetics are lucky. Do you have, I don't suppose you have any pictures or anything that we can see yeah. when you've actually shredded down. Let's see those abs lay to there for the two weeks pre-comp. <laughs> they weren't even as good as I would probably want them to be. Hopefully they'll be better this time. Hopefully I'll get down to about four. So this time as well, I should mention last time I did a 20 week prep for a comp, like a 20 week cut this time, my new coach and I are doing a 25 week cut because my body didn't want to drop fat. And so I got really starved at the end to get me there. Yeah. So what we're trying to do this time is to do a much slower kind of like the tortoise and the hare scenario um yeah. where we're trying to really slowly cut me back so I'm not like a zombie by the end um is the, okay. the plan so so that's I don't know if you can see that that's kind of my back ah uh, yes okay it's yes nice right back. okay so with some nice downlining um that's that's a photo shoot one yes so I'm in yes. the back okay so I'm at about, and there's like another kind of photo shoot one. So I'm still not really yeah. Abby either. Like for my shape, like my, I guess the way my abdominal structure is, they're uh-huh. kind of, they're like, oh, like, you know how some people have those really long 
lovely yes. defined yeah. abs. Mine are like a bit wider, so they it takes a lot longer mm. for them to come out. But that would be me at about 74 kilos, about 6% body fat. And mm. now on a different color system to where I am now. But now I'm at about 88 and at about 17%. Mm. I think, um, I mean, it's been fantastic talking to you today and I think mm. it gives us a really good idea just yes. what is involved yeah, in it's a lot. change in shape. It sounds like a huge amount and just listening to the language you're using this time, it's 25 weeks, this time before it was 20 and now these are my calories and mm. blah, 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 blah. It is a, it is a huge volume. Mm, so yeah. I know... Um, for myself, for people I see in clinic here and in the dance studio, there really shouldn't be much fear around doing some push-ups, going to the gym and lifting stuff and ending up looking like the Hulk, should there? Definitely not. In terms of, like, for, for a, a dancer, um, for one, it's going to help you with injury maintenance, um, obviously on top of you know seeing what eventually we want to prevent the injuries not maintain <laughs> oh yeah, not that yeah like as in maintaining your body to prevent the injuries let me yeah. rephrase um obviously it's going to help prevent all of that uh where was that going um so it'll prevent yeah. all of that um doing a billion hours of cardio isn't going to benefit you for that and obviously for girls and guys if you don't have that traditional ballet body shape like it's funny because on stage like the way they cast things like and they'll dress people like you have to remember as well on stage particularly in music theater they dress people in certain ways to look certain ways so a girl who's maybe a size 12 which is a very healthy size um if she's playing the bigger character next to the size six girls, they'll dress her to look bigger. So mm. if you've ever gone to the stage door after the performance um, and seen some of the people who walk out, like they're actually tiny and you don't realise on stage how tiny they are, even if they are, you know, the stereotypical like larger character, character, the larger yeah. character, the comedy actor, mm. they're often like, they're very healthy looking. Like, and often what you don't see under their costume is that, they do have muscle. They are a healthy version of their mm. body type. Not mm. everyone is built to be a showgirl or a rockette. Mm. And yeah. not everyone is built to be a, like a ballet boy. Yeah. Like, but they are all very healthy versions of their body type. Um, even if they're made to look stockier on stage, because obviously that's what they've been cast for. So, you know, there's de like, I guess my advice would be, I, I remember when I was auditioning lots, being a dancer is expensive because obviously you're upkeeping your dance um, mm. and you're doing music theatre, you're doing your singing, you're doing your acting training. Um, I would say get go to someone who is knowledgeable about food and nutrition because it's really important, um, particularly if you're doing a show eight times a week. And if you're doing a show eight times a week, then you should be in the income that you can afford the luxury mm. of that. And obviously have treatment or do what your body needs and obviously that will change as you get older and that like your priorities will have to shift around that mm. that makes sense absolutely that is some really solid advice mm. i think that's a really good point to um say our adieus but that's yeah. a really really good advice to be leaving on me really yeah. good thank you budget it in is what i say budget it in it's important if you want a long career or even a short career. That's <laughs> but you know, at, at the end of the day, I mean, obviously, um, I'm very much geared towards the dance community because that's where my life was. Mm. Um, but I work with my Joe Publix and mm. healthy movement, yeah. having good ability to access all kinds of movement goes on until we cark it, hopefully. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Having that factored in for, for anything is really important, especially yeah. for dancers. If we're not earning that much money is to just have that set aside in our budget. Mm. At least, yeah, being able to gym and healthy move. And even if you can't afford to see a PT or see an osteo mm. or a myo or physio all the time, to have the tools in place to, you know, know what you're meant to be foam rolling, know what you're meant to be doing mm. to help maintain your body for what your body needs. Of course they do. It's called the Strength of the Dance Channel, Lee. Exactly. There you go. Go see yourself.
made exactly for the less financially wealthy dancer. Yeah. <laughs> they can do yeah. their own training at home. Yeah. For the frugal <laughs> dancer, definitely. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. And I hope this has been really useful for many dancers out there. Thanks for having me. Super soon. Bye, Lee. Bye. Bye. <laughs>